Yep, just let me know when you're ready. And you're good to go. Kyle, thank you. Okay. Okay. My name is uh, Kyle Wiseman from Free Goal Music. So here we are going to um, go through all the facts about Free Goal Music and um, the discussions that I've had with the Nebraska State Library Commission and the opportunity that everybody has in uh, subscribing to Free Goal on, uh, on a discounted term. So I've uh, been invited to do this webinar uh, and we're going to take uh, questions from the commission at the end um, just to see. Um, we, we did an earlier webinar uh, if, if you already attended, but we're going to go through this, a PowerPoint presentation um, from Freegal Music all the way back in, at the start from 2010 until now. And then I'm also going to take you through the database as it sits today. Um, so we'll go, go ahead and start with that. Um, now, if you've ever heard of Freegal or have been following Freegal um, in the past three years, um, you, you would notice that it has changed drastically, not only from the model that we present to libraries now, but from the site itself. Um, so if you have heard of it and you haven't taken a look for over a year or two, I would um, ask you to catch a uh, form of amnesia here just for the next 30 minutes or so so we can uh, get all the facts on the table so uh, we can go through that. So, so free goal as it sits today, um, we offer libraries uh, a database in which they would pay a flat fee for the year, budget certainty for the entire library, and unlike ebooks or most of other databases that you subscribe to, the whole entire site will be unlimited simultaneous access to anybody that has a library card to your specific library. So it doesn't matter if you and a hundred other one of your patrons want to download the same song at the same time, you can. So it's much unlike ebooks in that in that facet. The library pays a flat fee for the year. Your patrons would have a certain amount of downloads they can take per week, but there is no overall limit on how many patrons can utilize the service in any given week. So the library doesn't have a, a limit of downloads that they uh, could, have, could go through the, for the entire year. But based on the size of the library, will determine what your rate is for the year. Um, so it doesn't matter if you serve a population of a thousand people or a million people, you will get the same database and the same access as every other library in the United States. And right now, we have over 3,000 library systems currently taking advantage of this. And it's working out fantastic. Um, I don't really have I don't get many complaints into my email inbox because this site really runs itself. Uh, there's no, first of all, there's no software for the patron to download. It's all web-based. They access it through your library's website. They cannot just type in freegalmusic.com and go. They have to have a valid card. They have to come through your library's website. So we want to drive that web traffic to you. And hopefully, by having a card and accessing free will, they'll discover other uh, options that you, you might offer. So ebooks, audiobooks, um, children's reading time. I mean, something that they might not know about, they're going to discover through your library's website. But what, they have to have a valid card to come through. Once they're on the site, the site will be branded specifically to the library. So it's going to be your brand, branded logo, your name across the top, um, your color scheme. You're going to have a, a tab that's going to tell all of your patrons, what are the most popular songs that my town is downloading this week? That's what you're going to have. Um, so right now, as I had said, there's over 3,000 library systems that currently have it. Um, last year, in 2012, we had well over one million regular users. Um, so it's going to be either your number one or number two most used database, depending on how successful you want it to be. Um, so as you can see, we have a very high renewal rate as well. 
Uh, so most libraries are very happy with um, the results that Freegal is, uh, is giving them. So like I said, over a million people using it last year and over 10 million downloads. Um, and so when we went through the, the amount of usage you can expect, um, it's really going to depend on how well you want to market it to your, to your patrons. If you put it on your website and you, and you put it where they can't discover it unless they go through six clicks, you know, into your e-music, and then they have to go through three other tabs to get to where they would enter Freegal. It's not going to be used as much as a library that puts it front and center on their uh, library's front page. So um, totally up to you how much usage you want to get out of it. But again, an unlimited amount of patrons can use it, so you might as well just make it your most popular database. Get your money's worth. Um, so over the past year, we've gotten a lot of publicity, whether it be on uh, hundreds of different blogs online. But our biggest splash was a couple of months ago in March. Now, this is a day after uh, the Pope resigned. And you would see on the left side the Kansas City Star, Kansas City Public Library, and a few other larger systems around the area. Subscribe to Freegal now. And they still managed to get it on the front page because it was that big of a news. And you know they have thousands of people using it every single week, um, so you should you should expect to get um, this amount of coverage. I mean, if you if you live in a mid-sized community with a local newspaper, put it in the newspaper, spread the word. Now, over the past few years, like I, I was talking about, we've gone through many changes. We uh, we now offer a subscription-based model. We've went from not only offering the Sony Music Catalog, but we now offer almost 30,000 more labels on top of Sony. And that's where we get the uh, Freegal 4.0 from. So it's a no-cost upgrade for um, existing libraries. But we're, we're going from about 2.5 million songs to about 7.5 million songs. So we're adding over 5 million more. And it's just going to be that much uh, bigger of a database and that much more music for your patients to listen to, to download, etc. cetera. Um, so last year as well, um, I don't know if you guys have followed this at all closely, but we do have a mobile application uh, for, for Apple products and Android products. Um, so if they download the, the app, they would have to find your library, type in, their library card number and PIN or however, however you do it. And once they download a song, it'll save within the app. And with the new upgrades coming, once they download the song within the app, if they're working from an iPhone or an iPod Touch, it's going to send it directly to their iTunes folder. So they don't really have to mess with it at all. It's, you know, we want to take all of the headache out of it, you know, all the questions that might be asked to you. We'd rather you be spending that on something else. So we're trying to upgrade Freegal to where it more or less runs itself. Um, a little extra thing that Sony did for us as well is that they are uh, providing us with 8,000 music videos as well. So I don't know if your patrons uh, will want to use them, but you know if you remember back in the MTV days, VH1 days, when they actually did music videos, um, they can actually download these now through Freegal. And you're, you're going to see um, all these music videos are from your, your more popular artists. So you're not going to see uh, many vis music videos from artists you've never heard of before. Uh, partly because music videos are so expensive to make is that only the, the most popular and the, uh, the top grossing artists are, are doing it. So the only difference is, is that when they go to download a, a music video, and we'll get to this again uh, when I show you the site, but when they get to the get to downloading a music video, it's actually going to cost them two downloads instead of one download. But that shouldn't be something you worry about for now, uh, but just a, as an FYI. Okay, uh, as we move on, um, some other upgrades that we're going through. Uh, Freegal is actually going to be accessible uh, before they, they log in. So say they, they come to your library's website and they see that Freegal is, you know, they click on Freegal. It's going to take them to the website, um, so they'll be able to see all the music that, that, that they could download before logging in. Uh, before and actually right now, uh, 
they have to log in before using Freegal. Um, another another request that we always get from libraries, and we're, and we're putting it in this summer, is that patrons want to see a wish list. So they, you know, like I said, there's going to be a limit for the amount of downloads each patron can take per week. And say they found ten other songs that they want they wanted to download, but they've already hit their limit. They can put those songs on a wish list, kind of like a queue. So once they log in the following week when they have more downloads to use, they'll be right there. They don't have to remember. They don't have to write them down. It'll be saved um, uh, on their login. So to get uh, to the library staff, uh, we have streamlined reporting, whereas you'll be able to log in and look at the actual usage you're getting from your exact library, where it, whether it be how many patrons are using it, uh, what, how many downloads you're going through, what artist is being downloaded, from what genre. Um, so we want to simplify the process. It's all exportable to PDF and Excel. So whoever you need to report those to, you can just print them off and send them on their way. Um, so these, like I said, we are adding uh, 30,000 more labels. And you might recognize a lot of these artists on here that you hear on the radio or you see at the Grammys. Um, Death Cab for Cutie is a is a big one. Steve Aoki, Boyz II Men, back in the '90s, all their uh, previous albums. Uh, Bob Marley, Johnny Cash. These are artists on top of what Sony already offers. Plus, there's millions more songs. I'll let you take a look through some of these other artists or um, other labels we are adding as well. Um, Sesame Street is great. Lots more Latin music for your Latin lovers as well. Um, and I don't think I got into as well, uh, with the 7.5 million songs that we offer, there is over 200 different genres, including Latin music, classical music. So really, there's something in here for everybody. And I'll take you through that as well once we get to the site. And we got into the, the music videos a little bit. So I'll just in writing here for you guys to take a look. So Freegal, you can't find this type of database anywhere on the internet, whether it be a patron subscribes to it on, on their own or in the library. Nobody offers a flat fee subscription service for unlimited access anymore. There's always some sort of limit on the library or the patron. Um, so we're doing that with Freegal. And you know, through the Nebraska State Library Commission, uh, and I have teamed up to offer opt-in type of pricing for each library. So like I said in, in the beginning, each library will have a certain price, you know, your, your price that you would, you would pay if you were coming in alone. But through the Nebraska State Library Commission, we're offering opt-in discount pricing. So based on participation between now and the end of June, we'll determine how large of a discount each library gets. I believe it's going to be anywhere between 10% and if many libraries join, we could get this all the way up to 45% off. Um, so there's a major discount in the making. Um, this discount is also available to our existing libraries in the state of Nebraska, so they're not left out. But this is a great opportunity um, to get involved with Freegal and offer uh, a very, very good AV source, a, a source in which they can get their music in the, in the um, format that they demand it in. So they can download their music. It's going to be compatible with any device. So we're going to exit the PowerPoint here and go to the Freegal's website. So as I was harping out at the end right there, uh, so this is the format that we all know that patrons want their music in. Uh, if you're a library that still circulates CDs, this is going to re really 
kind of make you wonder why you still buy them. I mean, we all know that the CD numbers, the CD numbers that you circulate are, are bloated. I mean, they're bloated um, based on because you know that you have those 10, 12, if you're a larger library, you know, dozens of patrons that come up to the counter with 10, 15, 20 CDs at a time so they can take them home, rip them onto their computer, and, you know, so they're compatible with their iPod or compatible with their MP3 player. And then they're back the next day doing the same exact thing. So what they're doing, you know, is just getting it in the format so it's compatible with their, with their small listening devices. And so that's what, you know, Freegold takes care of that problem. They don't have to do that anymore. Okay. And we all know CDs are not really meant for mass circulation either, whether it be you have to pay to protect them in a security case, or they're stolen, or they're damaged, or etc. I mean, there there's a lot of things that can go wrong there. A lot of staff time, un, you know, unneeded staff time is used uh, to make sure that that's run smoothly. Um, so, rant. My rant is over there, but we we will start with the service here. Um, so I've already logged in. So I've already come through your library's website. It's going to be compatible right over here. If you have a library logo, we'll put it right here at the top left. Your library's name across the top. Down here, you're going to have a My Library Top 10 like I was describing earlier. So you're going to have a My Library Top 10 download so your patrons will see. And also a not National Top 100. So all 3,000 plus libraries that have it, this is their top 100. Okay. Now, for the patron side, once they log in, they're going to see that they have a weekly download limit. Uh, the pricing that I gave uh, the State Library of Nebraska is based on three downloads per week. So they can take up to three per week. Doesn't matter how many people use it. Once they hit their limit, It'll just say right next to where it says, or actually where it says download now, it'll say limit net. It'll reset every Monday morning at 12.01 a.m. for them to take some more. Okay, so whenever they want to log in throughout the week is perfectly fine. Um, we've also, one of the upgrades that came uh, with Freegal 4.0 that I didn't talk about is push notifications for, for patrons. Most libraries like them. Uh, your patron will opt in and whether or not they want to be sent a reminder every, I think it's every Friday, that will just say, hey, don't forget you have three, three music downloads to take from Freegal. Whether it be they can have it on their uh, mobile device, it will just be a push notification from the app that they downloaded, or uh, they can uh, sign up to get one email per week just as a reminder. But we do not send them anything else other than the reminder for the downloads. So you see uh, these albums right here that are featured on the front. These are going to change typically every two or three weeks depending on what's popular, what's new, uh, who's coming out with what. So yeah, like I said, every two or three weeks. But I think from my perspective, the best thing about Freegal is that there's no collection development for your end, I mean, nothing you have to worry about. Whenever one of our artists or one of our groups comes out with a new album or a new single, we get it at the same exact time as iTunes and Amazon. So there's no, no waiting, no holdbacks, no embargoes. If we have an artist coming out with an album on this coming Tuesday, your patrons will be able to download it that Tuesday. So... Uh, in my, in my opinion, that is the best thing about it, is that with your one-year subscription, you get all the new music as well. It's always updated. So I'm going to take you to the genre tab here. Like I said, there's over 200 different genres in here. Your most popular artists, you know, Adele, Kenny Chesney, uh, Justin Timberlake, they're going to be they're going to be your most popular, or most downloaded artists, hands down. But there is something in here for everybody. 
whether it be they want to use the Chinese pop rock genre or they love classical. I mean, there's artists, there's music in here to, to suit everybody's needs. Uh, but it has that, that flair, that, that excitement, because we have a lot of the major label music in here. So that's going to attract a lot of web traffic, again, to your, to your site. So once they, click on a, once they click on a genre, I'm in classical right here, it lists all of the artists in um, ABC order. So if I click on a, an artist here, Aaron Zingman, it's just like the back of a CD, CD case. It's going to list all of the, all the songs that they've offered on this album. And I can come over here and download any song that I want. Once I download a song, it's just going to be saved into any file that they, they, that they want to save it into. So if their default music player is iTunes, and they set it up, they save it into iTunes, their first download of the year. From there on in, whenever they press download, it's just going to go directly into their iTunes folder. So after one click, they don't even have to mess with it. But if they don't have iTunes and they have Windows Media Player or if they don't have a, uh, a music player on their computer, they can save it to their desktop. They can save it anywhere. It doesn't matter. It's a DRM-free MP3 file. So it's going to be compatible with any device. Whether it, and they don't even have to transfer it if they don't want to. So we're going to go back to the home page here. Um, One last thing uh, that sometimes comes up, they're going to have a recent download page here. Now this is for your patrons that might be working with a slower internet or can't remember where they saved their song to. They'll be able to find their recently, ad or recently downloaded songs in here and they can re-download them at no penalty. So if it's at the beginning of the week and they haven't take, taken any of their songs, but they misplaced their three that they downloaded the week before, they just come in here, re-download those three, and their ticker up here will still say zero out of three. And so they don't have to worry about that. And uh, I am more than happy at the end of this at the end of this webinar. If you want to send myself or um, anybody at the State Library Commission an email that you want to be set up with a trial, more than happy to do that. Um, it would come from freegoalmusic.com, and you would get credentials to log in, download music, explore the entire database, show your staff, show your patrons, get them excited about it because this is this is a very good opportunity for all libraries. Um, and just to harp on one more thing, whatever discount that we end up getting to, this is not promotional pricing. So after the first year, when you're up for renewal, we are not going to go all the way back to the uh, price you should be paying. Typically, most libraries are staying at the same price or seeing a vague 1% or 2% increase. It's not much at all. But we're not going to take, if we got all the way to 45%, we're not going to take 45% away from you. We don't do that. Just to rest your, rest your minds that yeah, we're not in the business of doing that. But, okay, that is all I have. Um, so I think we were going to take some questions from the State Library here. I think Alana has the first question. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, my question is if I have a particular song title in mind, can I search for that title? Sure, yep. Um, right here, there's an advanced search button. Let me move my cursor out of the way here. Yeah, so right here at the top right, you can type in the song you want to go to. You know, song right here, artist, composer, or album. Or if you want to get even more in particular, you just go to the advanced search. You can just type in the song that you want uh, and go directly to that if you have a particular genre in mind, too. So, yeah, advanced search. Feel free to use that if you want to go directly to it. Thanks. Yep. 
Um, Susan, did you have any questions at the moment? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Kyle, just to hit, highlight a couple of things. The three Nebraska libraries that are already subscribing to this service, in case you know anybody wants to check with libraries that are already using it, are Omaha Public Library, Norfolk Public Library, and Columbus Public Library. That is correct. Okay. And in the original email that I sent with the pricing for each individual library, um, we had originally set the deadline as June 15th for signing up for this, but you had said that yep. you would extend that to the end of June, correct? Yes, end of June. Um, and I know that we had talked about that most of your libraries are October fiscal years. Right. If they want to just give us their commitment, now and not start until October, that is completely fine. But if you have libraries that want to start now, we are more than um, happy to pro prorate the price to match their fiscal year as well with the discount included. So we're very flexible on invoicing uh, contract links. Um, so just if, if, even if you think if it's, if it's a stupid question, it's not. It's, you know, just feel free to ask. So I've heard it all. So. Okay, and then can, could you also address the authentication issue for um, our small libraries that do not have a, an ILS sure. or a, a proxy server that can authenticate their patrons? Yeah, yeah. we will set them up with uh, what we call free, we call it free authentication. It's just our, our server. Uh, we would just get in contact with them. They would send us a range of barcodes that they have that they, that they hand out to their patrons and we would make it work for them. You know, the libraries that don't have an authentication system, don't worry, we'll set you up. Okay. And if you, and if you get new, and if, um, just to harp on that a little bit more, we would probably ask that you just send in a report probably either monthly or quarterly just with new patrons that have come in so we can update our, our uh, records as well. Okay, great. Um, and I think the last time, I guess, there were, there were some more questions about the different genres that were available, especially in the different, from the different cultures, Spanish, yeah. African, um, Asian, but I think you showed in the demo, you know, that, you know, there's Chinese and there's African and, and a wide variety of, of musical. Yeah. Oh, oh there! I mean, we 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 get our music from over a hundred different countries. So, you know, most you know, S Sony is based in the United States, so that's where we get our major label music from. But with the thirty thousand uh, independent labels that we have, I mean, that's derived from that's derived from over a hundred different countries. So you're going to get a big um, flavor for you know anything. I mean, there's African, there's Chinese, there's Hindi. I mean, there's Anything you can think of is in here. Okay, great. Um, I think that wraps up all the questions I had. So basically, they just need to check the email that um, was sent to them for either my contact information, Deborah, or um, your contact information, which was also in that email. Right. Yeah, and, and I'll just give it to them real quick again. My email is Kyle, K-Y-L-E. W, and that's at library ideas with an S dot com. So feel free to send me an email with your first and last name, and I'll um, just send you a trial of the service, and we can talk about pricing as well um, if you want to get in contact with me. So yeah, I'll look forward to everybody uh, emailing or calling. Okay, great. So thanks very much, Kyle. If you could hang on just for one moment, please. Sure.